Riot's MMO, Suspicious Indirect News. So this is not exactly about the Riot MMO, but technically about the Riot MMO. Let's see what Necrit has to say. I've been making videos for 13 years. I've been making League videos for 12 years. That's and a lot of years. is my number 1,000. All right, enough for the break. Back to the grind. <laughs> Whenever I get to talk about the riot... <laughs> Very accurate representation of making YouTube content. You just hit a milestone. Anyway, and you move on. That's it. MMO. I have to be wary of the fact that the people who like these videos the most do not come from League of Legends. In fact... I feel personally attacked. You have no idea how many times I've wanted to get into League of Legends and how many times I've wanted to get into Dota. I just can't. Like, I play the game and I'm just like, why would I play this? And then I stop playing it. Believe it or not, but most of that audience comes from World of Warcraft. Not only is this apparent by the amount of WoW creators reacting to my videos, which I'm totally fine with. Did you hear that? 100% fine with me reacting to this. But also, I need to move my face. Here is a more uh, statistical proof. And so, for all of you who came here from outside the normal sphere, if we want to talk about what happened to Riot's MMO, we have to talk about the big news that arrived from League's narrative team. It all started last week with a new drop from League's dev team, where outside of the normal news drops and new champion teasers, after a very long time, we got an update on what is happening to League's lore. For all of you who are unaware, for the last year and a half, the lore of League of Legends got essentially frozen. With the last story that would expect... Does he mean that very literally? This looks frozen. ...and the League of Legends universe, which is not connected to a new champion release, being released in June 2022. After which, without any announcements, League's lore just stopped getting updated. And from that point on, the only development on this universe we got were new cards from Legends of Rune. This looks so, like I said this last time, anything that has to do with old gods, anything that has to do with weird magical beings from like hundreds of thousands of years ago that have like this influence on the world, sign me up. Sign me up. That's why I love the Thrones universe. That's why I love um, like Elden Ring. Elden Ring is also a lot of these old beings that we don't really understand. I love all of these things. Sign me up. This is perfect. As well as two new games from Riot Forge, which still sounds good enough, but for context, on top of that, they're probably past, cooking arcane, right? We used to get about 20 or 30 short stories per year. So naturally, over time, the lore community went through the seven stages of grief, starting with frustration and ending with acceptance. And eventually, after... Isn't there something about, like, um, the dude who invented... Well, not invented, but, like, um, formalized the seven stages of grief? Apparently, people, like, misunderstood what he meant, and they're not really accurate. I've read something like that. I should probably look into it, because I'm pretty sure I reference it a bunch of times in my videos as well. I don't think it's entirely accurate. After that very Not long sure, time, we finally got an update. It was an update that on paper didn't seem that big. But in fact, it is so significant that I turned those two minutes of news into a 30 minute long video. <laughs> I love this. Riot has changed a league's entire lore. Everything is canon. This has got to be because of Arcane, right? I think Arcane was so big and it got into the mainstream that I think that's what they're trying to do. I think they're just trying to make everything cohesive. They're trying to cook up Arcane. And then when Arcane is really popping off, I think they want to start pushing the MMO. Because those are two things. That's like a two-pronged attack that gets so many people, right? Blizzard is already kind of doing not so well. Final Fantasy is apparently also doing not so well. So what they're going to do is they're going to cook up Arcane. They're going to get like everyone hyped about Arcane. That's like a meme, right? People watched Arcane and suddenly wanted to play League of Legends. Imagine if there's an MMO. So what Riot does is they really get into the mainstream with the show. And then they're like, look at this. We have a revolutionary MMORPG coming. And as I've said before, the reason why everyone wants an, M uh, wants an MMO is because it is a very long term, basically infinite profit generator. Because as long as people play it, uh, play it, you can monetize it with a bunch of different things in forms that no other game can be monetized, right? That's why the that's why the um, live service uh, model has caught on so much. 
That is basically what an MMO is fundamentally. Okay. Let's see. Among these short news, we learned that Riot is dropping short stories. Because truth be told, people are too lazy to read and almost nobody engaged with them. This is Which, true. even though my job used to rely on those, I have to agree with it. These days, if a story is not narrated, people won't care. I mean, look at today's youth. They won't stand a narrated video if it is over 10 seconds long. So instead, Riot will focus their stories onto the bigger projects be it bigger cinematics or gameplay events. But this is also connected to another big piece of information. The one that from now on, everything that comes out from League's IP will be canon in one unified universe. Because for those of you who don't know, that is- I really, 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 really hope that Riot has a bunch of lore masters in their office because we all know what's happening with the Overwatch lore. We all know what's happening with the WoW lore. We all know what's happening with Blizzard. Let, let's hope they, they have their um entire story in order. Not how the lore used to function. League of Legends- Which by the way, complete tangents. Any IP that creates these bits of information, canon information, not canon information, pseudo canon information, I hate this. I think if you make it like 100% clear that this is like purely for fun, nothing in this is canon, like nothing in this is canon, and then you say the rest of it, uh, rest of this is canon, sure. But if you have these splits where some things are canon, some things sort of aren't, some things could be inferred as canon, but are technically not really, I hate this so much. Because it like, it creates so many pointless arguments where there really shouldn't be any. Like if you're telling a story, just tell it properly. There's no need to write this sort of pseudo... I mean, at that point, it is literally fan fiction, right? If it's not actually a part of the main story, I mean, might as well call it fan fiction. Used to be a bit I don't more like, it. like a multiverse. Now, I have never seen the Avengers in my life. But from Same. what I've been told, it functions a little bit like the MCU. The core canon universe is the one that was connected to League of Legends. And all its lore came from a website called Universe which is where you can also find the interactive map. But from this core universe, you had other- Oh yeah, I just realized, right? I think I, oh, I didn't even realize. The reason why it's like that with League of Legends is because each character has like skins, right? And you need a lore justification why they have the skin. Oh, I didn't even think about that. I still don't like it though. Versions that would branch out. For example, Arcane was never canon in the core universe. In fact, the differences in the stories between Arcane and League of Legends are quite big. Which is why the video where I explained those differences was so popular. But on the okay. other side, we also had Legends of Runeterra. A card game rooted in League's universe. Which also brought up things which were never mentioned in the core universe. And so, Legends of Runeterra was also considered a different version of the core universe. But now, with the news we were given, it was confirmed that all of these are being united. So that everything can be canon. Now, of course, this would mean that some parts of some of the universes have to be retconned. Because only one true version of the story... Okay, I, I was gonna say, like... Why are we going suddenly full, full pink? Why is everything pink? This looks really cool. This city right here looks badass. Look at this ice cream stand. ...has to make it through, which is why in some parts there is a little bit of a confusion in the community. But in fact, it was confirmed that Arcane is now fully canon, with Legends of Runeterra being second in priority. Built over because from Arcane? Because it was confirmed that the vast... Yeah, I, thought, I thought I recognized bits of it, like the underground especially. ...the majority of that game is already in line with the new universe. Which means that these two together will... This too, I've also said this many times, this is like an old being, old magical being that you don't even understand. It's not, it's not like anything you want... Oh, this is so good. I love this. ...overwrite everything else that came from the core universe. Now, I understand that all of this sounds a bit complex, but there is a very good reason why Riot is doing this. On one side, it is a bit of a reaction to feedback, because no matter where you went, 
people either didn't know about the multiverses and they thought that Arcane was fully canon, or they knew about the different versions of the story, but because Arcane was so good, they wanted it to be canon. So with this merging, you're gonna be satisfying most it, of it's, it. It's just like, it's creating, it's what I said before, right? It creates creates so many pointless arguments, right? And like One Piece is, I think, a very, very good example, because the movies are not canon, but parts of movies are, right? And at that point, you have like this, you walk this line where you're not even sure what you're watching should be important, but you should, it's like, it's like a literal quantum state for everything, where it is very important and it is also not at all important at the same time and that's how i think about watching anything to do with like one piece movies so if they do like one big retcon to just make everything fit i'm fine with it honestly like one huge retcon just to like fix the history basically i think that's cool if everything from this point on is just like makes sense great let's do it your audience which by the way now also means that by watching arcane you're just teasing yourself for the MMO. But the other reason why this happened, I was already doing arguably that. the more important one, is that this is a setup for Riot's future games. Right now, besides Riot Forge, there are three big games related to Runeterra which Riot is working on. The fighting game nicknamed Project L, a kind of a forgotten top-down fighter called Project F, which we still have no information on besides that very short clip. And of course, the long-awaited MMO. But the amazing thing about these games is that now with the news that arrived, we now know that all of these will be connected. The places we'll see will exist across all the games. You can't, you can't tell me that, like literally Arcane will be a high budget advertisement for the video game. Like, I'm telling you, that's exactly what it is. Like, people say this about, like, live-action productions, right? That a live-action show is the most high-budget advertisement for, like, the source material. This show will be an advertisement for the MMO. And that's how they'll justify the price for it. 100% that's what they're doing. So, with Season 2, I'm expecting a news drop about the MMO. The characters will be consistent no matter where this they This looks appear. really cool. This is like not the three-eyed raven. This is like the sixth, uh, six-eye raven, right? Because it has three here and three, other, three on the other side. This is cool. Consistent, no matter where they appear, and their story and motivations should be linked in some way. Of course, that is unless it gets overwritten with gameplay. Now I know that all of this may sound insane the Fire Nation. and perhaps a little bit far-fetched because it may not seem like a big deal. But that is where Riot disagrees. Because a very important detail is that Riot announced that they now have what they call League's IP team. With their job being to oversee everything that comes out of League's IP and make sure that all the stories that come out... Wouldn't it be nice if World of Warcraft had one? ...are consistent in that one singular universe. Or again, in other words, there is a whole team that is dedicated to make sure everything is canon and everything is consistent. So going forward, from today, all new storytelling is going to be part of one shared canon, rather than a jumble of different experiences that are similar but inconsistent. And our goal is to ensure that major events in our stories, as well as the essence of what makes a champion who they are, will be reflected across everything that Riot makes. Which, as it turns out, should be a big deal for Riot's MMO. So let me explain. How I think it's that is like. To that. I think that is so cool. By the way, like building out a universe that spans multiple games, multiple things. To me, that that is so cool. And you have like this eternal team of literal lore masters that you like go to. Hey, listen, we we want to introduce this big baddie, right? And he's like, okay, let, let me let me open up the scrolls and see where he fits in. I find that so fun. You see, in the past, when I was working on the Riot MMO videos, we always talked about everything as a hypothetical. We knew what existed in the universe. And so, we were able to pick out all the things Riot might put into their game. Did you catch it? No matter what we talked about, be it the base world, the races and classes, the bosses and villains, I still haven't watched this one. or even the mounts, they were always things Riot might put into their game. Because we always assumed that the MMO will be a twist on their universe. 
but now we know it will be there the universe. There will be no twists, not with the IP team overlooking it. Now, what's even better is that if you go back to those videos, I, I think I think like um, it's not necessarily that everything will be in the game. I think it's that it will exist in the game, if that makes sense, right? You're not actually going to be able to maybe play parts of it, experience parts of it, but it is there. Somewhere, at some place, at some time, it is there. But we just can't really see it, you know? You'll see that for I, I do. I do think, like, assuming that everything will be in is... Shut up, Siri. She just listened to, like... Oh my god, she just listened to, like, two paragraphs of my rants. I don't think you should really assume that everything will be in the game. You know, I think it's more so the fact that the setting will be the same, which is still equally cool. Majority of the examples, I showed you things from Legends of Runeterra, which was confirmed to be one of the foundations of the new universe, which means that all those videos became way less hypothetical and way more like a guideline for what is right trying to... So basically, I'm playing the dude, like the samurai dude that we talked about. I'm playing that. Yet. Or in other words, uh, somehow those videos became a lot more relevant. Which is big funny w. because one of the big critiques I got for those videos was that they were awful because Riot's MMO was just one big mystery and uh, I was making stuff up. So was I now? To put this into context for WoW's audience, if we go back to 2002... Oh god, we are old. Back to when Warcraft 3 was released. If you look at all the world building that came with it, you'll see that since then things changed. Especially if you, you know how there are there are like two um two big ways people usually describe writing a story, right? There's the architect and there's the gardener, right? So the architect builds out everything of the story beforehand, right? So even before they start writing a story, the world is there and it never changes. That's why it's called an architect, right? They build it and only then they talk about it. And then there's the gardener. A gardener sows seeds, and then it sort of grows naturally. World of Warcraft is, um... <laughs> How do we call it? A out-of-control garden. Um, that sort of grows. There was once a building around it, but that building is now crumbled down. And uh, from that building, um, like, some, some, some bugs have moved in. And, uh... <laughs> and, you know, a few, few new life forms have taken form. There is still a garden underneath, and there was a fence there as well at some point. It's no longer there, but there it was there, and we call it Kalimdor, and you know we call the we call the whole thing Azeroth, and you know there's still some things that we we remember, but the rest of them, um, well, you know, we'll figure it out. Look at the world map. The Warcraft Three map was vastly different from what made it into WoW. In a way, people considered the WoW version an upgrade and, and which by the way, I meme about it, right? But even now in the uh, in the WoW community, there's another another whole outcry about like um like they put out a big lore book and it's now basically saying that oh it was from the Titans point of view, right? It's an unreliable narrator. But like everything in WoW is an unreliable narrator and at that point like is it even lore or are we just talking about dialogue and we are building the lore? So I'm very very happy to, to see Riot actually just put everything on, uh, in writing, as much as I mean about WoW sort of lacking it, you know? Because I do think it is a big deal. Game before. But when you break like, it story in MMOs is one of those things that I don't think people play an MMO for the story, right? I think Final Fantasy XIV is lightning in the bottle when it comes to people playing the game for the story. I don't think there will probably be another MMO that has such a tightly written narrative. I just don't think so, right? Because... A lot of people play Final Fantasy XIV only for the story, but a lot of people don't play Final Fantasy because it's mostly story. You know, so much of the game is the story that I feel like it puts a lot of people off. So I don't think a story is really like the main thing, but I think if the story is all over the place and the vibe isn't there and nothing makes sense, the game itself also feels like less interesting, if that makes sense, you know? Uh, League of Legends retconned its lore before. Oh, I'm, I'm sure they've retconned it a hundred times, right? I'm, I'm just talking about, like, setting up the MMO. Uh, I'm not sure about League of Legends itself. It, based on what he said and based on the fact that I think every hero does have, like, a separate narrative in terms of every skin, of course it has been retconned. But, like, big picture-wise, if they put the world in writing, I think it's already set up for success. We'll see how long it lasts. Because, I mean, obviously, it, it's still yet to be seen what happens in, like, a decade. Uh, but, um... 
with a story, it is like, if it's not there, you notice it. If it's there and it's good, you might not even notice it, and that's fine. But like the big world around it, it feels consistent, it feels coherent, and everything makes sense. That's like one of those things that I feel like is really hard to, um, um, like quantify, I guess. Down, it also became an alternative take on the world. Like, wh when we were going after the Lich King, everyone knew what was happening and everyone was hyped. Like, that's, a, that's like a very good example, right? Or with the Legion. The Legion narrative, very straightforward. We are being invaded, we take the fight to them. Very good. Very simple narrative. The vibe is perfect. Everything is good, you know? But when you get into, like, these weird abstract things, I think that's when things get really, really messy. When you start retconning things, then oh boy. One that made more sense story-wise and gameplay-wise. Because the map was reconstructed so that leveling and traveling around made more sense. But at the end of the day, there was still a lot of canon story that happened on the old layout. And well, for the longest time, this is how we thought Riot's MMO would work. Is, is there a lore between this little passage? Because there's a little passage in Avatar, uh, the Serpent's Pass. And I love the type of stories you can tell with these little passageways. These sort of passageways between two continents... It is so good for driving story. When it comes out, there would be some changes to the story. Hilltover and the world, is there? Oh! <sighs> so that the MMO wouldn't run into gameplay issues. Which means it wouldn't really be a one to one recreation of what we had. Exactly like what happened between Warcraft 3 and WoW. But now we know that Riot is planning ahead of time. And they are setting up their new universe so that there would have to be only a minimum of changes. And so that they can try and go for a one-to-one -one recreation. Now, is it realistic that Riot will succeed at this? Eh, somewhat. If Arkane told us Yeah, I, I, I think like inevitably like in a decade and a half, I think some retcons will take place. I think so. But still. The big picture is the important it one. It is that Riot can really pay attention to the tiniest details. But for the sake of good gameplay, I'm not gonna nitpick some of the changes. So now, with all of this said, Legends of Runeterra kinda became a blueprint for the Riot MMO. Think of it like an archive of concept art that Riot will try to put into their MMO. Sure, I think everyone can agree that Legends of Runeterra has a lot going on, so not everything will be part of the MMO. Yeah, th this is what I mean, right? That it, it can be in the MMO in terms of the story, but it's not actually going to be in the game. At least at launch. Because during my interview with the MMO team, they said that their ultimate goal is to recreate the Runeterra that we know. Funnily enough, they probably said it while knowing that Riot will be changing how the universe works. So they probably knew those words would have some weight. Even though back then, uh, I definitely didn't. Which also means that everything I showed you in my videos might as well be real. Which kinda came as a surprise to me as well, to be honest. When you have a look at the mounts, the question is no longer, will they put this dog into their game? The question now shifted to, how will this dog appear in their game? Because now we know that dog is somewhere in that world. When it comes to all the big bosses and villains, the question is no longer who will they pick to be in the MMO, and it's gonna be more about how will we meet Viego? Is, is there like um is there like a Tolkien type vibe in in the in the League of Legends universe where there's like age one, age two, you know, like that that sort of stuff? Because I feel like a lot of these villains. It's not like they exist all at the same time, right? There is some sort of chronological order to their appearance, or do they just exist as these old god beings somewhere out out somewhere, you know? I have no idea. So, if a lot of the a lot of the dudes that we've seen like these big dudes and like this dude who is uh, who is like Arthas with an attitude, if he was an anime character, if all these things exist at the same time, I can't even imagine what like the story of the game would be at, at launch. Greatest villain in this universe. That's unless you count Mordekaiser. Not to mention that when I was hypothetically talking about all the loot and all the legendary weapons... That this is me. This is me right here. Maybe this little guy right here. ...exist in this universe. Well, now they should consistently exist in that universe. Which suddenly gives the entire arsenal from the Ruined King a whole new meaning. So I would recommend playing a class that can use two-handed maces because when we fight Mordekaiser... 
uh, he better drop nightfall. This this was like the dude that was like imprisoned. And, wait, I, I remember something vaguely about this guy that he was like such a beast that he like died and came back. I, I, something about him was like godly. I don't remember exactly what it was, but he was like a giga chat. I remember that much. And lastly, with perhaps the coolest connection to these news, we have to mention the locations. If the IP team is making sure that everything is consistent, with a pretty high confidence, I can tell you that we are... This looks like Mythrex from uh, Risk of Rain 2. This is so cool. Extremely likely to find some of the iconic places... He was too angry to die and became the king of the... Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought, yeah. Like, he died and he was too... He was too big of a Giga Chad to die, he, so he just became king. Something... I remember something like that. He came back to life or he did something. Something, something like that, yeah. We know this looks really, really cool, by the way. ...out in the MMO. But what's even cooler is that... Arcane is on the same list too, so I can't wait to explore something like The Last Drop. Because no matter how or when that place will be implemented, now we simply know that place will be there. So, to finish off this video, I just wanted to tell you that all the right MMO videos which I made, which people thought were totally random, suddenly got a lot more real. It is that a cat? With hands? Momo, I heard you can get hands. He's gonna, he's gonna sleep, it's fine. Just keep in mind that I am actually not confirming what anything. What the hell is this? <laughs> what the hell ki- This is like an album cover, what am I looking at? This is a serpent dragon made of a galaxy that appears to be piercing time itself with flame orbs running around it. What the hell is this thing? I mean, now we know that all the things that appear everywhere will be in that world somewhere. But that doesn't mean everything will re- He created everything? What are these cosmic be beings? Really be there. Because at that point, the scope of the entire MMO would be unrealistic. Think of it like, we knew that Arthas was somewhere in Warcraft 3, so he was in the world, which meant that someday he would come to WoW. That is how we should treat all- Man, I can't, I can't, whenever I see this picture, oh my god, oh my god. The information. Can we go it's back? Basically, everything is on the table right now. But more on that, since now we learned that everything around League of Legends is connected, in a way, literally everything that comes out will reveal a piece of the MMO. Meaning that even though, for example, Legends of Runeterra is not really making money for Riot, because it is so ridiculously free to play. I, I think like, um, with this, what he's basically going to say is Riot is cre uh, creating their own internal networking effect. Like, literally, the more people that know about the IP, it will just generate value through the IP itself. It doesn't matter through where. There will be, like, loss leaders. There will be things that are sort of less profitable, things that are more profitable. But at the end of the day, you want to get people into this world. It's basically what, uh, what like, social media platforms do, right? They want to get you in. And when you're in, that's when they got you in. That entire game suddenly got a whole new meaning for Riot. Because even though it may not be a profit-driven game, it is a game that is driving the universe exactly. forward. Exactly. Meaning that it and is it's not just like um what I said. It's basically what he says as well, right? Like driving the universe forward. It's that it is also. I mean, we talked about this a second ago, right? Basically, everything they've done, their world is complete. Like the title, uh, the title of the video that we watched like a couple of months ago, that the world of Riot is complete. That is not hyperbole. They literally have the world and the lore of the universe mostly laid out. It's an insane amount of work, you know, to build an entire world out before you even start working on the game. That's a lot of work. Giving value to everything else Riot is working on. But also... And all, another thing, a lot of these things can push forward the lore before it even comes into the MMO, right? Because with, with World of Warcraft, again, I keep memeing about it, but it feels like they're making a lot of things up as they go. Whereas with something like this, if they have multiple things going on at the same time, they can really plan it out, you know? Importantly, 
even the cinematics will show us what's going to be in the MMO. Because yes, it was confirmed that some of the previous cinematics are canon in the new universe. This is so which cool. Which most likely means that Awaken and The Call are canon. And even this looks all the so, This looks so badass. Like, look at this. Cinematics, including the one that will feature Aatrox, will be canon too. Which also means that the new cinematic that's coming at the beginning of 2024, featuring the God Slayer, will generate some hype for the MMO. Because again, in a way, all of these parts are consistent across that one universe. So it technically all serves as the MMO marketing. This is by far the best benefit of this new universe. Literally everything that comes out out of the singular league IP will serve as hype to promote everything else that is also part of the IP. So we may not be getting any news from Riot's MMO. <laughs> Hold on. I'm just, I'm just looking at the cinematic in the background. Look at this. Look at this. Like, oh my god. Look at this dude. He will serve as hype to promote everything This else. freaking ice shard falls, breaks on his back. The mega chad throws so an axe that just flies through the air. Any news from impales MMO. this dude. Oh, he doesn't impale. He knocks oh, it away. In a way, oh my god, it's so yeah. cool. This also means that this guy stays fully canon now. The grip of shadow is tied a few sane souls inevitably trickle through. We do what we can to avoid the pull into madness. And this isn't a crit. Okay. So we may find him in the MMO. He's one in the game. Day. But of course, since the hype for Riot's MMO reignited yet again with all these news, why don't we cash in on it a little bit? And so, knowing that all the things I showed you before became a lot more real now. Here's a little bit of a hype piece to tease what this universe can give us. This smells like old gods already. This is Berserk. Just high fantasy. This is um uh the freaking uh, the, the Blood Mansion in Elden Ring. This is um um I don't even know. I don't know what this is either. It looks cool though. That looks badass. That's too much purple. Uh, too much yellow. It's like Skyhold. This is Deathwing. I love it. This is, um, really freaking cool. This is also really, really cool. The same thing, different angle. Oh my god, these are, these are like the freaking, oh my god, it's my... <laughs> Okay. This is this is too weird. I don't like this. This is cool. This is also cool. This is like archaeology. This is perfect. This is just an angry demon. I'm just like I'm trying to picture one of these things, you know? There are a lot of games and a lot of things where I know, like, for example, I use this example all the time, right? You play through Elden Ring, you understand the gist of everything going on, but you don't understand what's going on. So you go to YouTube and watch like four hours worth of lore videos, right? And then you're like, damn, a lot of things are going on, you know? And the vibe I get from this, like purely going by the visuals, they are so different that the world just feels insanely big. And I'm just like, how do all of these things fit together? And just how many different things are there going on at the same time? This feels like world building at its best. This was really, really cool. I like this. I really hope also this game has like life skills because purely like looking at this like this this archaeologist dude I want to I want archaeology to actually be an interesting skill somehow. I don't know how but I think it'd be cool This just looks badass. It's like Zod That's just an old gun That's another old gun That's like Rava 
Um, you know what? On second thought, this might be the coolest thing yet. This is so- is he chained? Are those chains? Hold on. No, I don't think they're chains. I think this is a bridge. Oh my god. You know what? I think I'm excited. This freaking thing right here is the coolest goddamn thing I've seen in this game so far, I think. Look at this. Number one, it's snow. Anything on the Kuroto scale, if it has snow, it is automatically buffed by 100 points. If it is some sort of weird old god being that you don't even comprehend, gets even more bonus points. If it has weird blue magic, gets even more bonus points. If it has dudes with weird looking helmets and long capes, gets even more bonus points. If they are terrified of the big monster that they clearly don't even comprehend and understand, gets even more bonus points. This hits all the marks for what this should be. Though, to be fair, this is another one of those times where I want these sorts of beings to never actually appear. I want these sorts of things to always exist, but I never want to see them. This will probably be like a raid boss. Like, looking at it, this will definitely be a raid boss, but I kind of wish it wasn't. I kind of wish something of this scale and something of this, like, magnitude was just a thing that is. It's a being that affects the world, and we know of its presence, but we just don't understand it, and the only thing we have is, like, stories of how it wiped out an entire army, you know? I feel like with a lot of these super high forces, you don't want to touch them because you're, um, it will just basically result in, like, a lot of scope creep, right? If you go from fighting uh, this guy right here, where was he? Like, even this, right? If you go from fighting these dudes to fighting something like this, it might feel a bit weird. Uh, can I post a li uh, link for an accurate video about the general history of League World in chat, if you want to check it later? Uh, you uh, you can't post it because it'll get deleted by Twitch. But I'll definitely check out more of these. Now that we know everything is canon, I'm going to watch all of these videos. Everything is canon, I'm watching all of these videos at some point. I'm probably not going to do it today. But man, it has to be Arcane Season 2. They have to be cooking for Arcane Season 2. And then they're going to push marketing. Like 100% that's what it is. It just seems like such a golden opportunity. With just how much Arcane Season 1 popped off, I don't think there is a single thing in the League universe. Like, League of Legends is massive, right? But the League of Legends community is very well established. The Arcane community includes all of the League community, but it is also massively popular in like the in like the wider wider pool of people, right? So I think Arcane has an infinitely larger marketing pool than League of Legends. I don't think there's a single event in League of Legends that could generate more hype than Arcane. Which is why I think Arcane Season 2 is the big one to watch out for. Man. You know what? Riot, I'm gonna let you cook. I'm gonna let you cook. And when you finally release this thing, I'll be right there. I've said this many times before, I'm gonna link it in chat. Give the video a, uh, give the video a watch, give it a like. When this freaking game comes out, and if the game is good, Kuroto's Mystery Shock might be in danger. I'll say that. Um, I also want to watch the, uh, the video about, um, about the monetization, right? Because, um, Necrit does have a video on it. I haven't watched it. I assume, like, the monetization model will be free-to-play with cosmetics. And I'm mixed on that. I'm not terribly, terribly into free-to-play MMOs. I've always been a subscription enjoyer. I've said this many, many times before. I will pay a subscription to keep cosmetics and keep weird things out of my game. We'll see, though. We'll see. I am so excited for this game. I'm so excited. We'll be right here to play it in 2020, 2029.